Good morning. This is John, the Vintage Fisherman. Today I'm working on a reel that uh, I've been working on, uh, we're looking for for a while. They're, I wouldn't say they're rare, it's just for some reason I, they just elude me to find them. But I collect damn quick reels and I've, I've, I've got plenty of 110s, but this is my first micro light. Uh, it's an ultralight reel. I wanted it at auction. It, it's got some issues. I'm gonna have to fix as I go. But let's get it. Um, let's get it took apart. I've never taken one of these apart, but I'm, I'm figuring it's just like any other, any other quick. Um, so, uh, with that said, let's uh, let's see what she's made of. I know for a fact that the anti reverse is no longer working. This handle is super loose. This is frozen. The bell is. It may need a bail wire. I don't know, but let's just uh, let's see what we got with it. We should be able to. We should be able to fix whatever's wrong with it. I think parts are still available, or not new parts, but parts are available on eBay and so forth for these reels. You can find them from time to time. That doesn't seem to want to come off like that, does it? Let's just take this cover off. I've mentioned before in my videos, these damn reels have really fine heads on the bolts. So if you're using a, a regular screwdriver the wrong size, it'll butterfly really fast. So I use this quarter drive ratchet with a quarter drive, quarter, one quarter socket, and a, a bit that's quarter drive. <laughs> a lot of quarters in there. That gets them loose, and I can just take a cheap screwdriver and run them. I'm thinking this is just a plastic cover that probably just pops off because it didn't want to thread off. I would have been right okay let's take a look that was supposed to be like that that cover probably just pushes off from the inside out I don't even know if I'm worried about taking it off of there it's I can clean it just fine like it like it is there so let's just leave that alone the, the it's a it's a reversible handle so this this boss supports the handle right there this thing's built like a tank I'm just going to tell you, it's built like a tank. Let's pull the spool. Everything seems to be intact on it. It has the um, spool filler, the cork spool filler on it. It looks like cork. I could be wrong. Yeah, it's cork. I'm guessing. Let's take the drag apart on it. Post. So you've got a wavy washer. Let's put it in order. Wavy washer, flat washer, and this is going to be a leather washer. I can clean that. Spool's in pretty good shape. Let's see if that clicker was working all right. So you got a good line out clicker on. That's done. Let's remove the shaft. Take this screw out right here at the end of it. And this has got a worm drive cross wire. Amazing. These, these reels made somewhere in the 50s or 60s. Um, they're just super tough reels. I love them. If you want, if you were going to buy a reel to carry into survival mode, I don't think you could go wrong with one with a damn reel. They're just so tough. You could fix them anywhere. All right, so there's your shaft, your crosswind. The crosswind gear has there's a bushing on there that comes off, and then the gear itself pulls straight off. 
and then I see what's wrong with the anti-reverse. I think I can fix what I got. Now, to get this out of there, this one's got a lot of slop in it. I'm going to probably have to knock that pin out of there. Maybe not the smartest thing to do in the morning before we've had your first cup of coffee for the day, but let's just give it a shot and see what happens. I had it upside down, so it's got to go like this. We'll match my punch up as close as I can to the diameter of that pin. And I'm going to wake everybody up in the house this early. <laughs> Maybe like, what the hell are you doing down there? Knocked it out, but of course the uh, pin went flying, but I'll go find it real quick. The handle comes off. You got a wavy washer underneath that, and then this is stuck, so I gotta work on that. So let me find this pin real quick before it uh it gets too far away from me. This is this is real life, folks. <laughs> this is real life. I actually let the pin go down and hit the floor. I know I don't have another one of those. Hang on just a minute. Well, I'm back. I have no idea where the pin went. That's another problem for another day. Let's uh, do something here. If it's wrong, um, to keep from mark. This is stuck. This is not going to turn easily. To keep from marring that up, I'm going to use a piece of leather. Channel locks aren't the best in the world, but I'm going to get a hold of that so I don't mar that up. And there it goes. Just take an old piece of leather and put on it where you don't mess the, the pretty chrome up on that piece. Dirty, dirty real, but it's gonna clean up really pretty. All right, threads look good. There's nothing under there except for a, what appears to be a snap ring. Let's get some grease off of it and see. Yeah, it's got a big snap ring. Let's see if I can manage to get that off without letting it hit the floor. Anybody that's took these little reels apart or any real part. I'll know exactly what I'm talking about and the frustrations when you lose a part on the floor. <laughs> okay, so there's a bushing set in there like that. It comes out. And there is your complete main gear assembly with the amp with the backlight or the anti-reverse cog on it. 
there is a clear plastic shim on the non-handle side of that. And that appears to be the entire assembly. I don't see any other shims on it. So that's that. That's simple enough, isn't it? The bushing appears to be good in it. Let's uh let's pull the rotor off. It looks like a 10 millimeter, it is. Like I said, these reels are made in Germany, so it's a, a European reel. Most of the time it's going to have metric fasteners. That seems to be stuck. Great. Hmm. Well, there's nothing to do but to uh, use a little bit of force. I'm going to start out with a small hammer with Teflon end on it. And I'm just going to hope that I can get it going without having to get real ugly with it. But it's not looking too good. I'm just going to say. should come off. I'm not sure why it's fighting. We'll soak it for just a minute and see what happens. I'll put some crawl in there. While that's soaking, I'm gonna look and see if I can figure out why this anti-reverse isn't working. It's on wrong. That's all that's wrong with it. This lever, you see how this lever is down here? It's supposed to be up here. Let me get a good look at that at the camera because I may have to come back and reference it. Because I'm gonna pop it apart while the other part's soaking. I don't think I'm going to need any parts of this reel unless I'm getting something really ugly on this. Uh, trying to get this rotor off. There's a spring. I think I can get the lever right now. I'm about to get the gear out. Well, no, there it comes. There's the lever. Let's remove this. Let's. They got the, even got the nut on upside down right there. <laughs> Somebody was having a bad day when he took this thing apart and tried to get it back together. Thank goodness all the parts are here, though. You'll see what I'm talking about on this nut when I get it out of here. It's uh, it's pretty ugly looking. So the nut, it's an a, it's a, a not really an acorn nut, but it's a crowned nut, I guess you could call it, and it was on upside down. So we'll. Fix that. There's a wavy washer under there. The eccentric had a washer under it. We'll clean all those parts up separate. I'd love to get that washer moving, and I think that would help me. Well, the washer is moving. I think. 
Yeah, the washer is moving. Now I can get more penetrant down in there. It's got to get the washer out somehow or another. I'm trying to be quiet because um, folks are still asleep here in the house. Okay, we got... It's like 5 o'clock in the morning, folks. <laughs> I got that guy at that far, but... It's seriously on there. I mean, there's other options. There's screws I can take off and remove this retaining plate. And I think the whole bearing shaft and all would come out. If the bearing's good, so I could repair it like that. But I sure don't want to take this thing apart. And get down in there and... It's going to kind of mess things up. I really need to get this off. It's going to fight me. For whatever reason. It may be a tapered shaft. Well, let me get a little more penetrant down in there and See what happens. So while that's doing its thing, let's take the bale apart. We've got another nut very similar to the one on the on the uh, yeah the eccentric cleaver or the anti reverse cleaver that comes off. And there's a tooth washer under that. Rollers free and it's good shape. This is the non spring side, so we're gonna pull that off. Really like this reel so far, other than it's fighting me a little bit. It's a nice, uh, well built reel. Don't surprise me, you know, it's damn quick, is known for uh, very, very good reels. And they're very relevant today, to be honest with you. You could fish this reel and be very successful with it. You don't need these fancy new reels people are fishing with. These old reels are really something. I'm going to take the bail arm off. Let me release the tension off the spring. There we go. You see how I did that? You, just, you flip that lever back and you can the bail's made to flip all the way back against here so you can store it without tearing, bending the bell spring up when you transport in a vehicle or in a backpack or whatever. It appears both screws are the same. So your bell arc arm comes off and here's your spring and it's, it's all there. It's just dirty, really dirty. I do know from looking at it, this piece here is bent and that's why it's not tripping. So we might as well just go ahead and take it out and we'll straighten it out. One screw, there's a washer under it. Shim, I guess I should say. Has a spring attached to it. There's the shim. Spring that I will probably just leave in there. Take the lever out. This lever is bent. That should be a 90 or closer to a 90 than what it is. We'll go with that. I'm a little bit worried that spring's gonna fly out of there when I go to try to pull this rotor. So I might try to pop that. I don't know. It's in there pretty good. Let's see what I can do with it. I use these little eyeglass screwdrivers as little picks. 
to get a hold of springs and washers and stuff like that to get them out with. You don't need fancy tools to work on these reels. I keep my fancy tools at work to work on diesel engines. Let's see here. I think I'm going to leave it alone. It's in there pretty good. I can't even get it to pop. If it flies out of there, I'd be real surprised. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There we go. Got it. There. Now I don't have to worry about it. All right. I'm not far from being done with this reel. <laughs> uh, just got the hardest part to do, and it's to remove this, this rotor assembly. You have to be careful how you do this, folks. You don't want to, you don't want to hit it right there and, and booger up those threads. You'll never get the retaining nut back on it. But it definitely needs to pop right in here. Something's feeling a little crunchy right there. All of a sudden, that wasn't like that before. I don't know what's going on. I could hit that with the Teflon. Teflon won't mar up or squish the metal. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and try something here and I can always put it back together if it doesn't work. Once again, this thing's got some very, very fine threads on, or a fine slot in these screws and uh, you got to be careful with them. Took a note that the um, the trip on this plate back here is at the 530 position when looking at the top of the reel. And I'm gonna take each one of these screws. I'm gonna try to just pop the whole assembly out and see what happens. If it will let me take it out. The reel doesn't look very corroded, it hasn't been using salt water. I'm not sure why it's so crunchy, but we'll see. Okay, well that wasn't so dramatic, was it? The crunchiness is just dirt. That bearing is good. trying to figure out a good way to do this and not destroy it. see this too good but I've got a I will take a piece of PVC pipe I use these for presses at times I'm gonna put the rotor sitting in there like that I've got a plastic punch and let's see what we can do with it
It's hanging tough. You know what? I might be um, the biggest dummy in the world here. I'm glad I didn't go too much further. This may thread out of there. Ha, huh. that's what it is. This, I believe this threads out of that rotor. And there's a preload set right there. So let's, um, let's protect this worm gear with a piece of leather. Yep, that's what it was. So, you know, you learn as you go. So, and I'm glad I didn't destroy anything. This worm gear threads into that rotor. No damage done. I could have easily done that with the reel together. There's your plate. The plate went with that knob up. That's your trip, your bell trip. The bearing, it's gonna have a swish to it, but it's not bad. I need to get it off of there, but uh, sometimes that's easier said than done on these old reels. I want to say that press is on there, but uh, It doesn't screw on, I can tell you that. Let's take our nylon hammer and we'll try to hold this. There it goes. Now I can clean that bearing really well. No damage done, whole reels apart. Um, let me clean this bearing up pretty good. I need to pull the shield off that bearing. Once I pull that shield, it's probably not going to go back in. Just saying. But, pull one side off and you put it in towards the reel, it shouldn't get anything in it but oil and grease. So, let's just see what we can do with it here. I'm going to try to stay in frame for you. an exacto and push down in there and try to there's really no way to do this and not destroy the, the shield just just saying I probably have one of these bearings more than likely The shields on these bearings are just mild steel. And as long as I can get something under, I'm not out of anything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like everything else from Dam. It's pretty well overbuilt, though. Not gonna lie.
Well, this might be a project for another day to try to get this bearing part. Might just throw a new bearing in it. I don't know. It just doesn't want to. I can't get that damn shield to pop. It should. If I can get that down under there. But nothing I seem to have here is working. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Got to cut that shield somehow or another. Well, I'll bring you back when I get it to, when I get it apart, because I will get it apart. It's just a, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when and how much force it <laughs> is required. There's that pin I lost. It's laying right here in front of me. See, it seems that the shield on this bearing is a lot tougher than what I had planned on it being. So, lucky me. It happens this way sometimes, folks. It just does. But I'll get it out of there. Oh, I made a little headway with it there. If I don't break my exacto knife out off in there or cut my hand with it, we'll be all right. It's just taking something thinner than what I've got screwdriver-wise. This is a very tight tolerance on this. There it goes. We're going to get it. We're going to get it, or we're going to go to the emergency room. <laughs> On a Sunday morning. Now that I got it to that point, let me get a little bit bigger screwdriver. You see what I'm doing? I'm just pulling this shield off. And once I get that shield off of there, I can get right to, and I don't need that anymore. It's not, you know, it kind of sucks I had to do that, but it's not the end of the world. It makes the bearing more serviceable. Now I can clean it. I'll put it in here and I'm gonna take some brake parts cleaner first. Soak in that. Oh, dang it. Yeah, it just had crunchy stuff in it. Yeah, let let that sit overnight, or tomorrow till maybe later on today. I'm sorry, it's the morning, so um, maybe later on today I'll come back and uh, finish it up. Anyway, that's a damn quick micro light tear down. With a little bit of drama, you know, because why not? It's an old reel. It's 60, 70 years old. I don't think it's ever been a, a part. Well, it's been a part partially, but not all the way. So uh, I'm going to fix the little things that are wrong with it. This is going to be a really nice reel when I get done with it. You're going to be surprised. <laughs> Considering the way it looks right now, the way it's going to be when I get done. Anyway, I'll bring you back when I get everything cleaned up. This is John. Well, welcome back. Um, I'm going to put this little micro light back together. Uh, where should we start at? Let's try to 
let's try to get this guy here back together. So the uh, the trip wasn't working in this thing. Wasn't working properly. Let's put it that way. So we'll see what I can do to fix that. I think this is just bent a little bit. If I remember, it was just needed a little bit more of a bend to it. Get this out over the camera. I'm try to do a little bit better job of getting everything in frame here. If I have to bend it again, I will take it back apart and bend it. We'll put just a little bit of grease up in there. This goes up in like that. There is a spring. I'm going to attempt to put the spring on after I get this in place. This washer. Oops. That did not go where I wanted it to. Uh, sometimes it's a challenge. Got that in there. Let me get my screw set here. I've shown this thing a couple times, but it's a it's a screw setter you basically put in the head of the sli uh, slide head screw and you push it in and it holds it. These most screws in these um, reels are not magnetic, so a magnet won't help you any, right? So, and then to release it, you just push that button on top and it releases the screw. Really nice tool. Had it for probably 30, 40 years. Got it from a friend of mine who's now passed away. He was a um, he was an IBM uh, service tech, and um, back when now IBM would be International Business Machines, and he was a service tech with them, field service tech of all things. So basically, he went out and he worked on. Uh, the earliest of the printers and copiers and stuff like that. We're talking 70s and 80s here. But uh, when he passed away, uh, he left me a, a bunch of his tools. And I still got them. And a lot of his stuff was uh, for working on, you know, more more difficult things to, to get your hands into. And I'm having troubles myself here. Trying to get this spring set. I'm trying to. I'll show you how it goes in there once I get it because at this point, all I'm doing is poking it at a hole and can't seem to find it. There he is. And that will go on back there. Okay. So there's how that spring goes in there. This is on the, on the quick. All right, let's uh, let's set the bell spring. Bell spring was like brand new. Uh, the the reel was sluggish, and so uh, we're gonna we're gonna fix that. I think it was really just sluggish because it it was just gummed up, you know. So to set the bell spring on this thing. You don't have to tension the bell spring yet. You can just kind of set it on here. Oh gosh. <laughs> Everything wants to slip. All right, let's hold that in place. Okay, all right, let's don't hold it in place. And then you get two fingers on it. And then either one of these screws, because they're both identical. Thank you, damn quick. <laughs> Whoever engineered these things did it right. That's all I got to say. They're simple. They're stout. They're built to last. Like I said, if I was going to go into a survival mode, like if I was going to be way off the beaten path, off the grid, and needed a couple of reels that could do it, do it all, I'd get, I'd get, you know, because we're not. If you're off grid, you're fishing for food. You're not fishing for sport. So I would. I would definitely consider, you know, this is a nice packable size reel. 
And yeah, I would consider this and maybe a, a 330 or a 440. Um, I think you, I don't think you can go wrong with those two reels and a, and a couple of rods, you know. This is the non bail arm side. Just takes a screw, nothing fancy there. There, now we got that together. This would go on like this. So a drop of oil. Uh, once again, I use Lucas Real Oil for general oiling part. I don't necessarily use this in bearings a lot, especially if it's a spool bearing for a bait caster. It's a little bit thick for that, but it is a good oil. A little bit of the pin reel grease I always use. Let me show you that. I use pin reel grease and everything. Sometimes, sometimes I use Super Lube. There's other brands out there that are good too. So that will go on there like that. You've got a star washer. Goes on. And then the, um, the nut. You don't have to crank that nut down real tight. You just want you want that roller to be able to turn once the nut's tightened down. If you turn it past where the roller won't turn, the line roller, then you've got it too tight. I think I got it there. Let's just snap it and see what happens. Yeah, it'll work. I couldn't snap it real good because of the way my fingers were in the way. Okay, let's move right along here. Let's put the housing together. First thing up is going to be the eccentric. The eccentric was in here wrong to begin with. Got to coat everything down. I was just looking at it, I was like, yeah, that needs a little extra help. Alright. This definitely needs to be sprayed down. That I use WD-40 a lot. It keeps uh keeps the corrosion down inside the reels after you put them back into service. I want to say it had one of these on the inside. We'll put a little bit of grease down in the housing there. It goes in with the it's a half moon or it's a, a half moon and it goes in with the flat towards the back of the housing. And then it had a smaller washer to the outside. And it had a nut. Well, sorry, it had the handle. And it had a nut. The handle We'll go on like that. Do I have that? I don't have that right. I definitely don't have that right. It takes, I want to say, maybe I should go back and look at the video. I want to say it takes 
copper washer and the anti-reverse lever washer and then the nut. And the anti-reverse lever has got a little bit of wear to it where it goes on that eccentric shaft but I think I can overcome it and they have another issue here we'll see yeah the nut is stripped so what does that tell me I gotta find a nut um is the nut of the shaft I'm going to go with the nut. Well, I'm going to tell you an old trick. Yeah, it's definitely the nut. I'm going to tell you an old trick. It's a small nut. It's going to be very unnoticeable. I'm going to egg shape this nut. I'm going to take my anvil here. It's not really an anvil, but I'm going to egg it down just a little bit. That's probably a little too much. Let's go back the other way just a little bit. With it being a brass nut, you can manipulate it a little bit. And it should thread down on there a little bit tighter. You know, there's more than one way to do these, to fix things. Sometimes you can just throw parts at it. Sometimes you can be a mechanic and actually fix it. I prefer to be a mechanic. Let's, let's see, maybe maybe I overfixed it, huh? We'll see. Yeah, I did. I gotta, I gotta bend that back just a little bit. That's okay. We learn as we go. We definitely do. One little whack would have done it. I did it three times. Yes. So learning as we go. Getting there. Maybe one more. One more. So what I did, I egg shaped it down so you catch enough thread to go up on there. We'll keep our fingers crossed. I'm not the first one to jack around on this thing. Trust me. <laughs> now I just got to get it to catch thread and go. If I can get it to do that without breaking the shaft, if it breaks that shaft, it's it's done. You know, uh, I'll have to get another reel. Well, I didn't break the shaft, but I did lose the nut. So, yes, I'm going for a hunt for the parts. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I still got the parts. Just got to find them. Hang on a minute, folks. I'll be right back. Hold on. Oh, Lordy, 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 where did he go? Well, maybe not. May not find it. May not find it. They went flying pretty good. All right. Parts lost into the abyss of my shop this is a problem but there's nothing i can do about it now let's go into my box of parts here chances of me having that particular style nut are 
slam is less than none. I know one thing for sure. I've got the washer. quick reels that I will go and rob parts out of. Some parts reels. So hang on a minute folks. Going dumpster diving here. Oh yeah, I've got the right parts here in stock. Just gotta rob it off of a. I got a damn quick 220 here that I'll rob it off of. I've got more somewhere, but I'm not gonna go diving much further right now. Let's just get this thing together. Got that. All right, we're gonna fix this. So the bell, the nut that holds the bell wire to the bell arm is the same size. And it's the same washer also. So I can put that washer back in my stash up here. All right. <clears throat> Sometimes you run into problems. Now I seem to run into a lot of them here lately. It's really odd that... Uh, I'm having as many troubles as I am on these reels here lately. It wasn't until I started filming my repairs that I started having problems with my repairs. Anyway, I got that on there. Seems to be threading down okay. Don't want to overdo it. Uh, that's That little shaft is brass and it will break. Let's keep our fingers crossed here. That's good. Only thing is, I don't know, it might be right. Let's see here. Yep, that's correct.
Hmm. Trying to figure out how they had this bail wire in there. I mean, this um, return wire on this. There, it goes like that. I want to say it goes all the way. Hmm. <clears throat> That's not going to sit in there correctly, I don't think. Yeah, maybe it does. We'll try it and see. So I got the spring set in there, and it, it's working correctly, but I don't like the way it's set. But I think once I put this gear on there, but it doesn't make sense how it's set. Okay, let's move along. Here is the main, the worm gear. Let's put it in. The bearing is free. And spinning very well, by the way. We got the bearing set. We'll prelude these three screw holes here. This knob went down here at 5.30. I remember saying that. This is a retainer plate and the bail trip striker does two functions. I'm not going to put the bail, the rotor on just yet. I'm not going to put that on just yet. I can go in there. I think it's going to work. Just not crazy about it. It seems like it should ride down on there further than that, but I don't know. All right, the main gear. Um, I, I flipped the uh, anti reverse paw up out of the way. This can get lubed. What a beefy main gear that is for ultralight reel. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're you can land a serious you could land a really serious fish on this reel. You're gonna break line before you break a reel. Trust me, a long time before you break a reel. This can go in with oil on it. <clears throat> you always oil these these handle shafts. They they don't normally get anything but oil so it goes in like that you've got this spacer that goes in there's a there's a collar or a step in it the step goes down and then there is 
the snap ring goes in. That snap ring went down inside of it, so something's still not right down inside of it. There we go. I don't remember that having a snap ring down in there. Yes, it did. Goodness gracious. Yeah, that, how is that snap ring going? This one's a challenging uh, little reel. For one thing, it's just so hard to get my hands down there. But number two, this spring is um, not cooperating as far as where it should lay at. Um, I'm not really sure why it's... That's right. This is, everything is right except for, okay, let's try this. Let's take the spring back out. Let's try to do this without losing the spring. There is a snap ring that went down in. There's no way. Yeah, there is a way. <laughs> I see it now. I had it right, folks. The spring definitely it goes behind here and then over this and then the spring wraps back if I can get it off the gear just like I had it. I had it perfect and took it loose because I did, I doubted myself. And it's going to go back there. And then right down there at the very bottom of that shaft, it's going to be tough, but this little snap ring goes down in there. And I don't know how in the world I'm going to feed it in place. There's no way my fingers are going to get down in there. Let's see if I can manipulate it with a couple of screwdrivers or something, but I, I don't know how this is going to work out. It's going to go somewhere right there, and I really hope this thing don't go flying on, because I don't have another one of these snap rings. At least not really handy. I might have one over in a box or something, but... Okay. Yeah. I got it, but it's not working. Something's got it bound up right there. Yeah, I see where it is. Okay. Got it. So the snap ring, the E clip. Whatever you want to call it, goes there is this the spring goes in and it loops up and touches the eccentric. And then the snap ring snaps into a groove on this shaft. And then you can put the crosswind gear in. And it, it should be flush with the pin or the post that it sits on. That's good. Okay. We're right there. Let's actually get it right there. We're good here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and
we'll go ahead and put the handle together. Well, I'm going to get this part of the handle together to hold it all together. Okay, I did forget one thing here. I'm sorry, folks. Let me, uh, let me hope I do this without. Whoa. You see what I mean about those things? They just take off on you. Okay, I had it right. Never mind. I had it right. I'll put that back in in a minute. The washer I was looking at goes... It's a, it's a learning process sometimes. Okay, this washer I was worried about goes right here. Yep, that's right. Non-handle side, I remember that. I remember saying that, actually. This gear will go back in. Hold on to that. Get a grip on all of it here. This can go in. Now, I can put the bail, the uh, rotor on. The rotor, remember it threaded off, so it threads back on. And this is where you set your preload on your uh, pinion bearing. So you'll screw it down. You don't want to get it too tight. You don't want any you don't want any lateral play. That feels pretty good right there. Then it got a little washer, which I'm gonna put a little bit more lube in there. Got a little washer with a key on it. Try to figure out which way that key went. Washer with a keyway goes like that and then the nut 10 millimeter nut these are standard threads they're not uh, left hand threads boy I tell you what if my fingers was any bigger I wouldn't be able to build this reel at all it's it's difficult I'm running out of patience with it because of my size of my fingers and the space I'm working in got that This is a lock nut. This locks that rotor in the position it's in right now. All right, so we're gonna do the cross wind next. Get some lube going here. Hear the click, so the anti-reverse is working. You got the cross wind We'll get you, you lube the heck out, heck out of it. It ain't gonna hurt it. The cross line will sit right there, and then your shaft. Everything looks pretty good on it. Yeah, everything looks good. I'll stick it in there and then put a little bit of lube on it to, or oil, and it will go into. Just line up the screw hole to the back of the cross wind block. And I see something I didn't do, but I can fix it in just a second. This goes on there. Okay. 
All right, let's flip this out of the way because this little bushing goes on that post on the cross wind gear. And this reel is just about done. A little bit of grease in those cover holes, a little bit of grease on this end of the shaft will be, uh, main gear shaft will be fine. Then your screws. I am going to fish with this reel, folks. Um, I've been looking for one, and I, I want to fish with it at least a couple times, maybe get it on video fishing with it sometime this next coming spring and summer season. Plan on hitting these streams and, and rivers around the uh, Virginia area a little bit heavier this year than I did last year. Last year was... Uh, Kind of a disaster, you know, for me personally with uh, losing my wife. I didn't, uh, it, it was hard for me to uh, get myself to go out and hit some of those places that her and I love to go to. And and I'm, I'm feeling a little healthier, you know, mentally. And I'm going to get out there and I'm, I'm going to enjoy life again. And, uh, I know, yeah, I know that y'all don't want to hear my personal sob story. And it's not. It's, um, it's definitely not a sob story. But, uh. Just want to let you know why I hadn't gotten out and done a lot of videos lately, but I will definitely be getting out and doing more. I found that pin that went flying earlier. It actually was stuck to the bottom of this block. And when I set this block down, it fell out. I watched, went back and watched the video and saw it. So now I fixed that handle. Remember that handle was really, really loose. You know, it actually still is. And I see why. Never mind. Goodness gracious, John. Goodness gracious. I gotta knock that pin back out. Got ahead of myself. That's no problem though. Lucky for me, it's just a couple of whacks with the hammer. Easier to take out now than it was the first time, trust me. Alright. I see why it was loose. They had the um they had this wavy washer in the wrong place. And that's why the whole handle was loose. It was underneath this. It wasn't supposed to be underneath that. This is a tapered pin. You got to really look at it close to see it. But you'll actually, if, if because of the way it's tapered, it'll go in one way. It won't go in the other. And the pin will have to be turned the right way or it won't go in. Pound that back in there, and hopefully this handle will be tight after fixing it correctly. Let's see what happens. Still a little bit loose. Almost like it's missing a washer up under there. So... What I'm going to do is, I'm going to knock it out. I'm going to put a washer in it. Let's go for uh, pin removal number whatever here. This is what you do, folks. If you want to, if you want to use it, you got to fix it. So what I need is I need another I need another washer to go up under right here. Right in here. Let's see what I've got. It could be a spacer, you know, you can call it whatever you want to. It just can't be too awful bulky. Spacer. That might do better than the wavy washer up there. A 
Let's do the wavy washer too. It can't hurt. Let's do the wavy washer. Then the spacer. Then the handle. It ain't factory, but it's going to be good. Close this up and don't put all that on the floor. Handles fixed. It could be a little smoother. It's kind of cold down here, and I think it could just be the grease is, is really thick. So uh, let's put the uh, spool together on this thing. All right, let's uh, let's lubricate these this leather washer here pretty good. This cows is really good stuff. Make the drag nice and smooth, and I do plan on fishing with this. On this particular drag washer, the smooth side of the leather goes down towards the spool. Then you got a keyed washer. You got a wavy washer and a little lube, not much and in your drag knob. That, if you remember, was the shield from the bearing that I took off and I redid the, uh, uh, renewed the bearing, basically. Yeah, it seems to be working. You know, you're only gonna use like two or four pound tests on this reel, six at the most, which I think would be overkill. Anyway, folks, there it is. The anti-reverse now works again. See, we got clickety-click, cut it off, no click, and then it will go in reverse. Turn it back, click. There it is, folks. Uh, it had a couple issues, which most of the reels I went at auction seem to here <laughs> lately. But it's fixed. It's fishable. It's not beautiful. It's not. It's not a collector piece. But it's a beautiful user reel, and that's what I'm in this game for. I, I don't care about. I mean, I collect reels, but they're not all museum pieces. Some people, that's all they'll. That's all they'll put on their shelf. I don't care. I want something I can pull off the shelf, and go fishing with. And if it gets a, if it gets nicked up, it's already nicked up. It doesn't matter. So. I'm very happy with how this reel turned out, and it will get some line on it. I'm going to put it over there on the table to put some line on it right now, because that's what I'm getting ready to do here in a few minutes. And um, thanks, you, thanks to everyone for watching. I know my videos sometimes get a little long, uh, but I go in depth. I go in a depth I don't really see a lot of people doing, and I show every bit. Of, I don't edit too much out of my videos. Uh, even my bald head shows sometimes, you know, and or I'll slip a... A word I shouldn't say but you know it's it's part I think part of the process we're all doing this stuff at our houses I want y'all to be able to take a quick micro light and fix it and go fish with it that's what my channel is about and um, but anyway like I said thanks for watching please like the video and subscribe to my channel and I'll catch y'all the next one take care